Today we are going to look at one of the most important concepts when talking about linear equations, the slope of a line. So let's get started. You have probably heard the term slope before. It is used to describe the steepness or tilt of something. Maybe when talking about ski slopes or on road signs where we have the slope or grade of a road. In math, we use it to describe how steep or flat a line is. If a line is very steep, it goes down or up rapidly. In this case, this downhill skier is going to fly down that hill very quickly. But if a line is flat, yeah, that same downhill skier is not going to be moving very much. And he may have to switch to cross-country skiing to get anywhere. So what is the slope of a line? The slope is the rate of change of the line. So the rate of change is the ratio of two things that are changing. What is changing is the vertical and the horizontal positions of this line. Let's look at vertical change first. So I'm going to pick one point on this line and I'm going to add a vertical line that goes through it. Then I'm going to pick a second point on this line and place a horizontal line through that point. So we have a horizontal line and a vertical line. These are perpendicular, meaning they intersect at 90 degrees. So the vertical change is this distance here. And the horizontal change is this distance. Let's look at it another way. When we talk about vertical change, we're talking about how much a line goes up and down. And so we'll call this the rise. And when we're talking about horizontal change, we are looking at how much that line goes left or right. And we call this the run. So now we can define slope as the rise over the run, where the rise is how much the line goes up or down, and the run is how much the line moves right or left. So let's practice finding the slope of a line. So graph paper, so paper that has these grid lines on it, it's going to be very useful when we're trying to find the slope of a line. We will use these grid lines as the vertical and horizontal lines that we'll use to find the vertical and horizontal change, the rise and the run. Now there are multiple ways of finding the slope of a line. How I do it is I start at the leftmost point. So from this point, I'm going to move to the right in the positive direction until I reach the grid line that represents that vertical line through the second point. As I'm doing this, I'm counting. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is six. And from this point here, so where my horizontal line and vertical line intercepts, I'm going to count, in this case, up until I get to the second point. So this will be one, two, three, four. So this value is four. So from this, I have a rise equal to four and a run equal to six. A slope is equal to the rise over the run. So this is four over six. And we can simplify this down to two thirds. 
the slope of this line is 2 thirds. Now in this example, I did the run first and then the rise. But you can also do the rise first and then the run. So in this case, we'd go 1, 2, 3, 4. And once again, this distance is 4. We have a rise of 4. And then starting from this point, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And this would give us a run of 6. So those are the same values for the rise and the run, resulting in the same slope. Now I started with the leftmost point. You can also start with the rightmost point. So let's try that. I'll do the run first, so the horizontal change, left and right. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we moved to the left six spaces. So the left is negative, so this is actually negative 6. We have a run that's equal to negative 6. And then again, to get that second value, we're going to start where those two grid lines intersect. And now we're going to move down. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is a value of negative 4. So we have a rise equal to negative 4. Again, our slope is equal to rise over run. And I will write this formula each time. One, it's a great way to learn the formula if you have to write it down each time. But it also makes sure you grab the right numbers. So we have rise on top. I need to make sure I grab rise, which is negative 4. And then same with run in the denominator on the bottom. That's negative 6. We have a negative divided by a negative. So those negative signs are going to cancel out. We'll end up with 2 thirds. And in a similar fashion, starting with this second point, we could have done the rise first. In this case, we're going to go down negative 4. And then to the left, negative 6. So those are four different ways that we can find this slope. We can start at this point, this first point, and move to the right, and then up to the second point. Or from that first point, we can go up first, and then to the right. And then starting from this second point on the right, we could go to the left first, and then down to the other point. Or, starting from this second point, we can go down first, and then to the left. Your choice. But like I said, I usually start with the first point on the left, and then do the horizontal change first, followed by the vertical. So let's practice a few. I will start with the point on the left, and then move to the right, and then up. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3. This has a value of 3. So run is equal to 3. And then we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. This has a value of 4. Our rise is equal to 4. Slope is equal to rise over run. We have a value of 4 over 3. So the slope is 4 thirds. For this second problem, I will start with the leftmost point, And then we're going to move over 1, 2, 3 spaces to the right. So this is a value of 3. And then we're going to go down four spaces. 
We move down, that's in the negative direction. So the rise is negative 4. So our rise is equal to negative 4. Our run is equal to 3. Again, slope is equal to rise over run. So we have a value of negative 4 thirds. So negative 4 thirds is the slope of this line. So let's take a look at these two graphs. With the first one, as we move from left to right, the line went up. And this line had a positive number for the slope. With the second graph, as we move from left to right, the line is going down. And this line has a negative slope, negative 4 thirds. If a line is going up as it moves from left to right, the slope will be positive. And if a line is going down from left to right, the slope will be negative. Let's try two more. Again, I'll start with this leftmost point. So counting that horizontal change, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So our horizontal change is 8. And then from here, we're going to move down 2. So our vertical change, our rise, is negative 2. So we have a run value of 8 and a rise equal to negative 2. Our slope is equal to rise over run. The rise is negative 2. The run is 8. And we can simplify this down to negative 1 fourth. So we have a slope of negative 1 fourth. We have a negative slope. And this line does go down as we move from left to right. Then with this last problem, go 1, 2, 3. So our run value is positive 3. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Our rise value, our vertical change, is a positive 7. So we have rise equal to 7, run equal to 3. Our slope is equal to rise over run. And this is equal to 7 over 3. This is a positive slope. And this line is going up as we move from left to right. A great way to learn is to practice on your own. We will discuss in a bit, but go ahead and pause your screen and do these two problems. For this first problem, again, I started on that leftmost point, And then we had a run of eight units till we got to that vertical line. And then from there, we went up 2. This results in a rise of 2 and a run of 8. Slope is rise over run, so we have 2 eighths, which simplifies down to 1 fourth. Positive slope. The line is going up from left to right. With the second problem, starting at that leftmost point, we moved over five units to the vertical line. And then from there, we went down six units to the second point. So we have a run value of five, a rise value of negative six. Slope is rise over run, so negative six fifths. We have a negative slope. This line is going down as we move from left to right. Continue practicing finding the slope of a line, and I'll see you in the next video.